I'm Pamela Olin, and I'm a welder. I'm an artist who works in a variety of mediums. Today, I'm going to talk with you about Zen and the art of welding. You may say, what does Zen and welding have in common? Well, there's a lot of principles of Zen that I put to work in welding that serve very well. Things like patience, calm, breathing, focus, bracing well, and becoming one. <laughs> when you're comfortable with welding, physically comfortable, that's going to make it so that you don't have to think about, oh, my shoulder hurts, or my hip is cramping, or anything like that. So step one is being comfortable in your environment. It will let you focus on what you're doing and listen for the sounds that you need to hear, which is, in fact, the sound of sizzling bacon. If you have a smooth sizzle, you know your settings are correct. Another important factor in getting a good weld is bracing yourself. We move little tiny movements just because we breathe, and those little tiny movements wind up being very large movements when you're out here trying to control a, a tiny, tiny puddle of metal. So by bracing yourself, leaning into the table so you're stable there, and limiting, limiting the amount of reach that you're doing, either elbows on the table, using other objects around you to brace against, those are the things that are going to help you stay on point, literally on point when you're working with a puddle. The most important thing to focus on when you're welding is the puddle. The puddle is what's created when you first strike an arc and you don't go anywhere. For a second or so, you actually keep the tip of the wire in a small circular motion and that's what creates a little puddle that you can then control. You can use it to bridge gaps, you can use it to build spikes, you can use it to build walls. These things can be either decorative or functional. The puddle can be controlled both by pushing and pulling. You can push the puddle from the outside edge of it, again using small circular motions. It's more like you're influencing the direction that it's going in. You can push it into places to, to fill things. You can also pull it. The puddle is attracted to the heat at the tip of the wire that's created when you strike this arc. So you can gently pull that puddle where you need it to go. When you're writing with it, because you can actually sign your name with it, you can create designs um, on steel if you're careful and you don't burn through. necessary to achieving a good weld are, first of all, good penetration. Good penetration means that both pieces of steel that you're working on have been penetrated enough by the heat of the weld that the weld will hold up. Because truly, and this is the Zen part, you're taking two separate pieces of steel and when you weld them, they become one. That's the Zen part. Um, on certain pieces of steel, depending on what you're working on, if it's things that you can see the back side of, you should be able to see evidence of the penetration. And I'm talking about in pieces that are, say, up to about an eighth of an inch thick. 
Um, you can see evidence of discoloration. If you're not careful, you can burn through, and obviously that's a little too much penetration. You want to have a consistent bead. A bead is laying down a line of weld that you do using tiny, tiny circular movements. Movements like you're taking the tip of the wire and circling the head of a pin. You'd be surprised how large those movements become when you're dealing with a small puddle of steel. And the puddle is usually maybe a quarter of an inch to three-eighths of an inch in diameter. That's about it. That's where also a bracing comes in very handy because you can wind up outside the puddle and you get spatter, you get an uneven weld, and a weld bead is really a signature. And you'll find the better you get, the more consistent your bead becomes. It's the kind of thing that it's very easy to make sparks, it's very easy to pull the trigger and send metal flying. It takes a lot of practice to do a weld bead well. When you're welding materials of different thicknesses, I do recommend starting your puddle on the thicker piece. You can then nudge the puddle just to the edge of the thinner piece and it will flow into it. And if you're very careful, you'll avoid burning through the thinner piece of steel. So rather than having your weld settings, your, your welding settings, set to the thinner piece, which will not penetrate the larger, thicker piece of steel, you're better off having your settings set for full penetration of the thicker steel and using your puddle, manipulating your puddle very carefully to create that weld on the thinner piece. There's four kinds of welds to be aware of. One is a lap weld. That's when the two pieces of steel overlap like this. You're going to weld on both edges, so you want to be able to have access to both sides. That's what's going to secure it so it doesn't go like this or like this when it's under pressure, under tension. You have a corner weld, which is fairly self-evident. And when you have a corner weld, you can weld on the inside of that corner or the outside. If you overlap your pieces like a T, your inside corner weld is going to be your strong point. Depending on the nature of what you're doing, will determine if you do a weld on the outside of that corner. If you do an outside corner weld using two pieces that are thicker, so when you put them together like this, there's a small angle here. Like if you have two pieces of quarter inch steel, they're not going to necessarily meet. If you have them right at the corner, you can do an inside corner weld on the outside and an inside corner weld on the inside. Um, the most common kind of weld is a butt weld, and that is where they go straight together, and you have access to both sides of the material. So you run a bead gently going between both sides on the top, and you flip it over, and you do, so you are making contact with both sides on the back. You can choose to grind those flat or not, depending upon what you're using them for.